in uh, different classes. You, I think I've always had at least one senior. I don't know that I've ever had a team that didn't have a senior. Uh, but uh, it, uh, it's still emotional. It's draining. It's, uh, you think back to um, so many good times, some bad times. You think of those two. But it's, uh, it's the toughest day of the year for me because it's usually a big game. Uh, usually a rival, even in uh, the Big 8, Big 12 at the end. Uh, uh, you realize, or I realize, that the last time that I'm going to coach those kids in a home game, and uh, that's, that's emotional for me. Uh, so far in my career, I've never been had any seniors I was glad to see leave, so that, that's good. I wasn't glad to get rid of any of them. Uh, but yeah, it's 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 the toughest day of the year for me because of all the emotions and the emotions that they have, the emotions that their families have. And I remember when when Scott was a senior and uh, we we're playing at Iowa State, and uh, so I flew back here. We practiced and I flew back here for the game, and then uh, flew back out there because we played on Sunday, and it was the only way that it worked out. And uh, it was emotional for me as a parent, you know, because it's different stages in your kids' lives. And uh, but it's for me, it's uh, it, I have an emotional attachment to them, and I think that uh, hope, I guess. But I do think that most of them will say that it wasn't just about uh, winning with me. When you say your first one at Kansas, do you mean your first seniors or your first four years? The first year I coached, it was some seniors that uh, uh, the year before they were left that uh, uh, gave me a chance the first day. This no-name guy, and you know that uh, I wasn't even big name in my own house, much less anywhere else. Uh, but they gave me a chance, and uh, we had some really emotional ones at there. And we one year went out, and the crowd threw roses all over the court because it was a, such a fantastic senior class that had really accomplished a lot. So, yeah, they've always been pretty emotional. You say that that is the toughest day, tougher even than maybe the most years when you lose in the tournament, or is that all? Do you view that kind of as the bonus time you get? Well, it, when you lose in the tournament, the toughest thing is what do you say to the kids and the finality and how quickly it is. That's that's the toughest part. You know, you'll always have those memories, but uh, generally speaking, kids really enjoy where they're in school, enjoy playing in their home arena, enjoy. Uh, running out of the tunnel. Uh, I mean, I've heard Mary Montross to Antoine Jameson to Tyler Hansbro talking about running out of that tunnel. And that's the last time that they're going to be able to do that. And uh, uh, Tyler would give a lot of money to do it again. And, uh, and I know that because I just talked to him this last week. Uh, but uh, it, it's, that's the different part. Losing the last game is always difficult because you don't have any do-over. There's no mulligans. And, uh, uh, but it's that's a different thing. When you have kids that may go pro after one year or three years, whenever, it might be their last home game too. Have you ever thought much about, hey, is it worth ever address, you know, addressing that? Or usually these kids haven't announced it at that time. I mean, how do you look at that? I just don't look at it. <laughs> you know, we're playing, and if they decide that that's good for them and that's what they want to do, then I'm supportive of it. Uh, uh, Michael Jordan one time said one of the uh, biggest regrets he had was not giving his senior speech. And uh, I didn't know if it was, and I know at that time it was at the basketball banquet. Uh, you know, so you have those thoughts, but whatever their dreams and goals are, I'm okay with. But uh, uh, the ones that uh, we're honoring, we know this is their last. And uh, I mean, Kansas had a kid last year decided he was leaving, and then all of a sudden in August decided he was coming back. So. Uh, uh, I've I've never thought uh, of trying to get somebody to say, okay, well, what are you going to do? I want them to be focused on today and not just uh, what's down the road. You've heard me say that. Don't just be looking down the road at what might be down there. You'll be going home. How do you put in words what Luke May has mentioned this program over the last four years and his whole story? <coughs> the kind of, what do you think about it? Well, it is hard. You know, everybody still says the walk-on, but, he, I mean, come on. He, he wasn't really a walk-on. I mean, he agreed to come, and Mom and Dad were going to pay, but he had other scholarship offers, and uh, 
uh, I, he, hand, he handles it really well because those people had done a nice job recruiting him, but he wanted to be a Tar Heel, and I was very fortunate, and I knew that, and tried to tell him how badly we wanted him, and uh, so that part uh, makes it look like he's come from nowhere. But he could have gone to Davidson. He could have gone to probably Clemson, uh, Virginia, Notre Dame. You know, some. I mean, he had some some good offers. He was just a North Carolina guy. Uh, but once you get past that, the thing that I'll remember for the rest of my life, which I hope is more than a couple of weeks, uh, is how far the kid came, how hard he worked, that desire and that determination, the belief in himself. Uh, I really appreciate that part that he. It wasn't a lark, you know. He didn't just work. He knew that if he did it the way he wanted to, that he'd get a chance. I like. I take a lot of pride in the fact that he knew that I would give him a chance if he if he deserved it and got to that level. So the more of it is admiration, or just uh, I was proud of him of about uh, what he's accomplished. Because you know, when you're talking about basketball players, did they reach their potential? That's one of the things as a coach that you did. You help them reach their potential. I use Wes Miller as an example. Wes Miller got the most out of his potential of any player I've ever coached. And uh, Luke May's in that discussion. And uh, so I hope that he's really proud of that because I'm really proud of that for him, that he's uh, uh, played at such a high level against such a high level. Uh, that's what I'll think about. I'll, I'll think about the smile and the great kid and all that kind of thing. But i uh, just proud and, and know that deep down inside, he's got to be pretty proud, too. Was, from your perspective, was there any moment that changed the trajectory of his career here where you could see he said, I can really do this? Or was he always filled with the belief that he could be an impact guy like he is? Uh, you know, his freshman year, we played him sometimes. Uh, you know, he had I think, probably six or seven minutes a game or something like that. I, I really don't remember. But I kept saying, I think he's going to be good. And... Uh, I think that at that point I felt that maybe more than anybody else on my staff did. But if I had to pick any moment, uh, so what you're talking about, I would say the the regional, uh, you know, where he played great against Butler and then was big time against Kentucky and made that last shot there. That was a, a giant leap, uh, no question about that. That was the one that I think even gave him more confidence. Uh, no, I think he had the confidence, uh, but I think it was one of those – told you so moments for him. I showed you, you know, that kind of thing. He doesn't really say too much to us generally, but after the Duke game, he got going on how people never thought he could play here, and people still tell him he's not good enough. I mean, do you feel like that stuff still fuels him? Does he still play off that in practice? Not in practice, but I think it fuels him. But I think, uh, you know, I mean, he came to games here a couple of times, four or five, who knows how many, and I remember standing in the hallway out there on the other side and telling him and his dad, don't be in a rush. Don't be in a rush. And I remember pulling Mark over the side. I said, please, don't be in a rush. He's got a chance. I really believe he has a chance. And this was like his sophomore or junior year. And uh, I really believe that. And uh, so I think that uh, he used it as motivation at that time and probably used it as motivation now. But, uh, you know, if it's – uh, if it'll make him have 20 rebounds Saturday, I hope he uses his motivation again between now and Saturday. I mean, when you see a kid at that age, sophomore, junior, what do you what do you see in his game that gave you the idea that he might be good enough? What I thought when I saw him in camp was what drove it more than anything. He had really good hands. He could shoot the basketball. Everything you ask him to do, he tried to do. So he's going to be coachable. He's going to be big. He had great hands and he could shoot. So those kind of guys can play. And I don't know where, what level, or how they're going to fit in, but those guys will figure out a way to play. And, uh, again, I can remember very plainly, just like it was last night, saying something to Mark. I turned around and Luke was talking to somebody. I said, I'm serious. I think he's going to have a chance. And uh, and then, it, needless to say, fortunately worked out it, that his chance has turned into a pretty good deal. Or in preseason before his junior year, did, when you talk – between your staff and so forth, mm -hmm. what did you expect? Did you have any idea? Did you expect him to break out like that? And this is this is just we're straightforward. I had one coach say, "Coach, you like Luke a lot more than everybody else does." And I said, "That's right," and I'm the freaking head coach. <laughs> and that makes a difference. And uh, but uh, you know it it does. I mean that's just being truthful. But uh, I, I just. 
when a young man sits in my office and says, Coach, I'm going to show you nobody's going to outwork me. I remember that moment. I can take you up there and tell you which chair he was sitting in and which chair I was sitting in. So I like those moments too. Coach, as you get ready to start game plan for Duke, you're game planning for a team, you know, with or without Zion, but it's different than when you were mm -hmm. a couple weeks ago. Um, you know, how do you gear up for that? And again, it's Duke Carolina. I mean, you've been a part of a few of these. Is that mm -hmm. you know, yet ever lessen the height of it? I guess. Uh, you don't have to do a lot. I mean, you know, I'm push, 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 push a lot of our games, you know, because let's focus, let's do this. Uh, but it is, it's Duke, North Carolina, so a lot of that takes care of itself. We prepared before we went over there to be playing against Duke's full team, including Zion, and who had been having as phenomenal years as any freshman I've ever seen. And we're still preparing like Zion's going to play. And at the same time, time they're going to make that decision so we have no say over it so you know why worry about that part of it uh, we're going to try to prepare to play Duke University and ever who's got that uniform on uh, we're going to give a scouting report we're going to give a scouting report <clears throat> Zion in it and if he doesn't play uh, you know that's that's their decision and you know they're they're not in the easiest part in the world uh, if I remember right in 09 uh, I know we held Ty Lawson out of the ACC tournament, and I know we held Ty Lawson out of the first round of the NCAA tournament, and I think we held Ty Lawson out of the last. Well, did he play the last? He home got game? hurt two days before we played Duke to finish the regular season. Okay, so he played then, and we held him out of the whole ACC tournament, and against uh, Radford in the NCAA tournament, and it's part of coaching. It's part of what you do now. Uh, Zion was having an incredible year, but Ty Lawson was pretty damn important to us too. Uh, but it's it's what you do, and uh, the other guys. Uh, I told Tyler Hansbro and Wayne Ellington, those guys, y'all got to make up for it. Well, I'm sure they've got some pretty good players over there that they've got to be. I'm sure they're telling them the same thing. But we'll try to prepare uh, for him being in the game, and if he's not, he's not. If he is, he is. Coach, throughout the years. Um your seniors have always changed you some sort of way. You've always had an attachment to them. Um, for this group of seniors, how have they changed you as a coach? Well, you know, it's it's faith. There's a lot of it. I mean, because uh, Luke and, you know, and the other one's Kenny. I mean, uh, Kenny Williams has been pretty doggone important to our club for four years, and particularly the last three years. And uh, I think he's just he's meant more to our team than anybody thought he was going to when we signed him. Uh, but he's meant so much mentally, emotionally, and physically on the court as well. So you're proud of, uh, of those two because neither one of those guys were McDonald's All-Americans, uh, uh, Jordan All-Americans or anything. They were All-Americans in their home. That was about it. Uh, but I wouldn't trade those two guys for anybody else in that class that were McDonald's All-Americans. And uh, I think they know that, and I think they understand how important they have been to our program. And it's... Uh, what they've done and been able to be a part of has is, is really been a, one of those truly good stories. And you mentioned with Theo and Justin and Joel that they had trusted you mm -hmm. during a tough time to stay committed. Kenny's commitment, I guess, was also kind of in that point too. It was kind of a mm -hmm. key piece for you. Do you have a sort of a similar feeling about him kind of trusting you at a tough time for you guys? Yeah, and a little different though because, again, Justin, Joel, and uh, Theo, well, they were McDonald's All-American types, and, and Kenny was not. And I loved him. I mean, I was very disappointed when he decided to go to VCU. And then when all of a sudden that changes, and he came down and played pickup, they played in the practice gym, and uh, uh, we couldn't watch him. So I didn't watch. And, but I asked every player. And every player said, God Almighty, he made every shot. And I remember seeing him with Boo Williams' team and in uh, some of the summer or spring stuff. I don't remember where I, I, I can remember which court, but I don't remember which building it was. Uh, took two charges in a row, and both times after he took a charge, and they were hard, he goes down, he makes a jump shot on the other. I said, that guy can play for me. And so that's what we fell into, that we really liked him. But I think at uh, VCU had really done a nice job recruiting him for two or three years. And uh, so, no, his, uh, his deal was a little different. Those guys could have changed when the first news came out. When the first news came out, it was all negative. You know, I mean, they're going to do everything in the world to us, and those three guys – Stuck with us, but Kenny's is a is different level, but the same kind of thing. When you and Mike have your little pregame chat, there is it 
kind of the same general thing every game, or has there been one where you had a really good laugh or anything like that? Uh, I think he would probably say the same thing. They're not that damn memorable. <laughs> okay, I mean, we'd say good job, good luck, or whatever, you know, it's that kind of thing. But uh, I have a tremendous amount of respect for Mike, and uh, uh, I, he had one of the best ones last year. It was in, uh, um, where was the term? Brooklyn. Uh, Brooklyn. Uh, it was in Brooklyn, yeah. He said, we, three years and three games, he said, we got to stop doing this. I mean, but two years in a row, we'd played three times. Uh, but it's generally, if there's something that's been going on, we, we may make some reference to something that's been going on, either in his camp or our camp or whatever. Uh, but generally, it's just like, well, here we are again. Uh, good luck to you. It's, let's hope it's a great game, those kind of things. But I genuinely have a great deal of respect for him. There's no question about that. Cam's, Cam's situation is very different because you haven't had any kids transfer into the program or out of the program. But not only did he transfer in, but he's been a heavy impact player. At what point during this process did you kind of see that he had fully assimilated himself with the guys as being one of the guys and also, you know, embracing the fact that he is a part of this culture? Mm -hmm. hey, it was very early because he's such a good kid. I mean, people enjoy him, and he and Kenny and Luke were living together, and, I mean, he, he was really easy to get involved, and he lost himself into the team. He didn't say anything or act any different way than – he was just a new player. It wasn't, hey, I've been at Pittsburgh and I scored 21 against you guys. What did he get against us? Was it 24? 24. I just remember twice right in front of him, he shot the sucker and it just looked great all the way in. And when they contacted us about him, that's my first thought is he uh, remembered how perfect that spin was after he left his hand. Uh, but no, his was a, a very quick adjustment. And then relatively soon, you know, we start practicing, he gets hurt and misses some games, but golly bum, did he really put in uh, the time in the training room to try to get better. He really wanted to be part of the program. I mean, that his work ethic in the training room to try to take care of his body was as good as anybody's I have ever seen. I mean, he does more to prepare than just about anybody. Well, what part of his game has developed the most since he got here? Uh, I've talked to him more about his rebounding probably because we don't have the Bryce Johnson or the Kenny Meeks that the ball just finds their hands 15 to 20 times a game or anything like that. The rebounding was going to be uh, so vital to us. And I've gotten on him the hardest at times when he didn't do that. Uh, but he's really bought into that and, and bought into putting the ball on the floor and not just being a shooter, uh, bought into trying to get better defensively. He's bought into everything, but I think the uh, – Losing himself in the team and his respect for his teammates and the respect that they have for him was really easy uh, because, again, the kind of person he is. But if it's from a basketball viewpoint, uh, the work, uh, the high level that you have to work out and how consistent you have to be at that, he bought into that pretty quickly. Coach, you didn't shoot great from three at Duke, still one, but you shot 65% inside the paint. Uh, what's the key in that kind of attempting and <clears throat> replicating that efficiency inside? Time well, I'll take those same numbers as long as the last numbers, the same one. That was the final score. I'd take that again. I don't care what it is. But, uh, you know, you don't expect to uh, go two for 20, two for 20. You don't expect to go two for 20 and win, but we were so dominant with making everything inside. Uh, so the game could be 180 degrees away from what the game was over there. You never know until you get into it. Uh, uh, I don't really, I mean, we shot 42% against Boston College the other night, and at one time we were up 23 or 24, something like that. Uh, you need to make some threes. I've always said you got to score against Duke. For us, to beat Duke, we've got to score because we don't hold the ball and make it a 40-point game, and we're not comfortable. So we've got to, uh, Steve Robinson's got a great saying, attack or be attacked, because they're going to attack you. So that's the way we think we do, too. We're going to attack them back. It, it, a couple it, more. Do you, I've got to ask two questions. You put up importance on um, trying to uh, get a as high as a seed in the ACC tournament as possible, or even a, a one seed in the NCAA tournament. So do you like look at this game as with even more important because of as possible it's on the line? Never even think about it. Okay. I'm just being honest. We're just trying to freaking beat Duke. If we beat Duke, we're at least tied for the ACC regular season. Uh, I've never, right now, I could not tell you one location, not one, 
I mean, I know we're in Charlotte. I know the ACC tournament. But once you get past, I couldn't tell you one location. We just try to get our team to get better and get better. And there's, uh, you know, it, I'm, I hear what everybody's talking about. Steve tells me all the time. I say, well, what's this or what's that? But I don't spend any time doing anything except trying to get uh, get ready to, to play Duke on Saturday. I really don't. And it's it's out of my control, so I don't think about that. And there's a lot of things out of my control I do think about that I shouldn't. Uh, but that's not one of them. I just let's try to beat Duke on Saturday. Also, did you grow up watching ACC games uh, as a kid? And if so, what station? Uh, never watched uh, ACC basketball until I was probably a Final Four or my junior or senior year, not junior year in high school, I believe. I, you know, we education again wasn't spoken about in my house. I didn't even know I was going to college till probably my junior year. Uh, the first ACC game I ever saw in my life, I played in the preliminary as a member of the freshman team. Never saw an ACC game live in my life until we played in the preliminary. Uh, my high school coach was a North Carolina guy and would talk about it all the time. So my senior year, I probably saw two or three games, but that was just not my world. How do you think ACC will change without Ray Carlin? Oh, guys, I, I, got, I got no idea. They wouldn't be as good without Phil Ford, David Thompson, Walter Davis, and those guys, I know that. But I don't know anything about that. I really don't. I'm very proud that uh, the people in this area were the some of the drivers with television for college basketball and how college basketball has grown. Uh, but um, I think there were some people that had a tremendous vision. But, you know, I was in Kansas, and they had some of the only copies of the 57 National Championship game. And, uh, you know, I, I worked with the guy who called the 57 National Championship game. He was our radio guy. Uh, but uh, remember who you're talking to. I'm, I can tee it up with the best of them and I try to coach, but the uh, other stuff I don't get involved in. Any bats? Anybody else quickly? One, one question. It's not necessarily applicable this year because of the seniors that you guys have, but why is it still important for you to kind of keep that tradition of starting scene? Because some years it's it's a walk-on who hasn't really played and you're playing Duke uh -huh. and there are all kinds of implications and you're yeah. starting to see. Why, why is it important to keep that tradition? Because they'll remember it for the rest of their lives that they started a game on senior day. It's pretty easy. Thanks, guys.